Coming up over a few beers in the shed, we go head-to-head on a topic that divides every red-blooded four-wheel driver, and that is the best four-wheel drive ever made. Also, we've got more of your four-wheel drive fails. We're going to answer more of your questions from the week, including everything you need to know about canopies. Plus, we've got great prizes on the best deals and tips to help you get more out of your four-wheel drive. From our sheds to yours, this is the place for all of us four-wheel drivers to stay connected 24-7. G'day, guys, and welcome to another episode of Beers in the Shed. Now, I've been spending a lot of time in the shed, as probably you guys have too. I've been doing a lot of maintenance on the four-wheel drives. Um, I had wheel bearings on the bench, and the good news, like that was last week, and this week here, wheel bearings are not on the bench, they're in the vehicle where they belong. And um, so I've actually been doing a little bit of a tidy up, and uh, that time of day where I've cracked a cold one, and um, I'm about to bring Graham on the line. Mate, are you there? Yeah, mate, I tell you what, I've been, I've been looking forward to this since last week, I kid you not. And. Uh, I, I might have had an extra beer in the fridge before you rang me, but uh, we're good to go, mate. We're good to go. Cheers, buddy. Yeah, Woo. cheers. Cheers, mate. And cheers to everyone else. And um, last week, we obviously tuned in for Beers in the Shed. It was a massive, massive hit. So Didn't many people well. tuned in and actually, you know, obviously they might have had a beer, they might have had a cold can of Coke. I'm not sure, <laughs> but they joined us online and um, the comments, if that was anything to go by, mate, there was over a thousand comments there. So... I think this is going to be a regular segment, um, probably every single week here on YouTube. How about we? Uh, how about we have a flashback to last week, mate, and have a look? We, we talked about the best value for money four-wheel drives last week, and didn't we get some comments? That really got people talking. I tell you what, it's a great topic as well. Best value for money four-wheel drives. I mean, it is. That's it a is. sweet spot for a lot of people. Like when you're trying to pick a four-wheel drive for your own use, that's what you're after. The best value for money value, four-wheel drive. Value, value, value. We got um, a lot of Pajero love out there, mate. That, that opened a can of worms. I really suppose we don't talk about the mighty Pajero that much. There's a lot of vehicles we don't talk about yeah. a stack. Yeah. And um, you know, and even like Land Rovers and Jeeps, mate, there's, there's a lot of people that drive those out there. It's good reason um, for some of yes, those though, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna let a little secret out with um, you guys and um, the rest of the world as well. That one of the vehicles I've always wanted to do up is a Series 2A Land Rover. It's pretty cool. Yeah, look, I haven't had that many beers, mate. Don't stress. It's um that's <laughs> true, it's a true, it's a true thing. I um I've always loved those vehicles. And um, those Jeeps as well, of course, they're some yeah. of the most oh, cap- capable nice. straight out of the box. You yep. Know, yep. My first car I ever wanted was a TJ Wrangler, but I couldn't afford it. Simple as that. Another thing that popped up in the um, questions yep. from, from last week was there was a lot of comments about the Toyota that was in your shed last week. That's not a Toyota. I, That's a Holden. No, 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 no. Last what are you talking week, about, mate? Last week, mate, there was a, there was a uh, it looked like a 79 series in there. A white one? I, Probably I the a, nicest thing that's ever been in that shed of yours to be. I had, a, I had, a, I had so, a crack at a Toyota for a little while there, for a couple of weeks. And um, look, what, oh. I, what I can say is, thank God it's out of my shed right now. And I've got something trusty and actually halfway capable back in the shed. That was a mate of yours, that vehicle, wasn't it? Yeah, mate, yeah. it was. He's actually chopped a 76. It is actually pretty darn cool. Not cool enough to stay in my shed, though. I've kicked it out, replaced it. <laughs> Woohoo, with the old ball ute, mate. The old skid machine over there. Love it. That's good, mate. You've got you've got a couple of um, vehicles. If you sold them all, you'd probably be able to buy a real one as well. But um, no, looks as long as, you have, as long as you're having fun, mate. As long as you're well, having fun. We are having fun, <laughs> mate. Speak, speaking of having fun, I reckon we should, with no further ado, get stuck into this week's hot topic. So this week's hot topic was um, a super popular one. It nearly broke the internet. In fact, it was um, the best full drive ever. Full stop. Now that is. That is a sh- exactly right. Like the best four. There's, there's so many four-wheel drives that have been made to narrow it down to just one. To say one oh. is the best that's ever been made is such a massive, Didn't it massive some call. Mate? It, it did though. That's Jeez. a thing. And I'll, I'll quickly run through some of the some of the people that uh, had their say on um, on Instagram. Um, Riley, it, Riley, a Suzuki Sierra for sure. Who doesn't love a Sierra? I've got to agree with yeah, you. Yeah, good little car. They're fun. They're fun. I don't know if I'd take it to Cape York tomorrow. Um, Typical. <laughs> You, know, you want to have a young back to do that. Here we go. G Benson, a 79 Series Ute, single cab, 1HD FTE. That is an all-time cracking vehicle. And, yeah, you, you got good taste you, there, yeah, mate. you got good taste. Owning one of those is a bit like standing on a bridge just throwing money off into the water. But, no. hey, as long as you're having fun, as you always say. As long as you've got one, you're not in the market to buy one. That's the key because they are so expensive secondhand. <laughs> Sam Pugsley, um, 90s LN 106 Hilux. Oh, my goodness. That I think it yeah, doesn't matter bad, if, eh? what side of the bridge you're on. That is a cracking vehicle and um, yeah, just one of the all-time great. legendary four-wheel drives out there. Defender Expeditions, let's have a guess what he what had to say. Uh, TD5 Land Rover <laughs> Defender. Yeah, look, cool cool vehicle. It's one of those vehicles you get in, you go, this is not comfortable at all, but after you spend about an hour in the seat, you get this little smirk and you go, 
yeah, these defenders are pretty cool. So, Graham, at the start of this episode, uh, I said to you, you would not be able to pick what my best vehicle of all time would be. I'm going to give you one. I am... One chance. I, well, look, I'm going to have to go with the obvious, mate. I'm going to have to go with the obvious. And I, but I reckon you're going to surprise me. I really, you, you yep. know your four-wheel drives, but I'm going to go, I'm going to say an 80 series. I just think you're going to pick an 80, 80 series. An 80 series. Know. Yeah, you're right. No, look, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? No. <laughs> look, <that's, laughs> I, thought you were, I honestly thought you were going to come through with some sort of no, look, obscure I, Colorado I, I, from I 1940 to, mate, or something. And I basically, I went deep this week. I, I like to do my research before one of these um, beers in the shed episodes, and I just... Yep. I just went and did all my research. I rang about 400 different mechanic work workshops around the country. <laughs> you did not. I, no, I did. I did. did. I did. It's taken me a whole week to do this research. I've got it all written down here. In fact, it's it's um it's legit. How, how big's how big's your little piece of paper? Is it? Not. Oh, it's not real it's big. Good. It's actually it's actually an old no, re it's receipt. From, it's actually an old receipt. I just wrote on the back. Of it. Hey, oh, that's not the that's not the point. I just do shorthand. Right, and, right, go on then. So look. Go on. So. It's an 80 series, and I own a lot of different Land Cruisers, and um, I, I've driven a lot of different four-wheel drives, in fact. But an 80 series I keep coming back to is probably the best all-round four-wheel drive you can get. And um, it's not best value for money, necessarily. Me, because Entert Entertain me, come on. Okay, we're I'm talking about if there was one particular model, it's a 40th anniversary. Mm -hmm. It's a um, factory turbo diesel 80 series, so th that came with a 24-valve um, uh, 1HD FT motor. Um, absolute cracker. Those things are just amazing vehicles. I've never actually owned one. I've got an um, HDT, which is very close, so that's good enough. Yep. They've got coils all around, disc brakes, so they stop, they handle. Um, they're a little bit narrower and shorter than a 100 series. I just find them easier to drive yep. and a little bit more capable off-road. Um, reliability, yep. which is just absolutely insane with the reliability of those things. They just keep going and they're simple to work on, so they tick all the boxes for me. One of the best like engines... It. I reckon ever made those engines yep. because a lot of people will go on and say the one HZ is, is just oh, an all time classic Toyota engine. I disagree. Yeah, yeah. And I think the one HZ is probably one of the most overrated engines of all time. If I'd be truthfully honest here, I'm probably going to ruffle a few mm. feathers there. Look, it is reliable. There's no doubt about it, in, but it doesn't make power. It's not very economical. When you jump into a one HDT or an FT, if you're lucky enough, those ones, they rev a little bit more, got to stack more power. And I just reckon, I just reckon they're a far, far better engine and nothing at the time even rubbed shoulders with it. It was just on its own. Hmm. I just think as well at that time in the, in the eighties, then with the 60 series and then into the nineties was the height of engineering for Toyota. That's when they use a lot of metal in the doors. That's when they use like double grommets on the firewall. Um, every single wire had its place and it was just a very bush proof vehicle. It was a vehicle that was designed to do 500,000 kilometers. And I can't say the same about the current batch of vehicles out there. So that's why I'm giving it, I reckon the best full drive ever made. But if I, if I can just have one that's, more second, mate. One more second. Please, mate, go for it. The, the, mic, the mic is yours because once it gets to me, I'm dropping it. <laughs> so you keep going, mate. So, so, <laughs> so I, I decided I, I decided that, that that's my opinion. I decided to do a little bit mm -hmm. more research, go a bit deeper on the topic, and um, I think you'll like these ones, mate. I, um, these, yep. these, are, these are obviously true facts from the internet, um, but I, I, read, yes. I read that um, 9 out of 10 females, 80% of the time, yes. every time, worldwide. Yes, most of the time. Uh, I voted the 80 series the sexiest motor vehicle ever. Like, you can't even make that up. That's true. Um, here's another How one. How many quite... beers have you had in the shed before you got in here today, mate? It's... I'm a little concerned about you. No, look. I, continue. Uh, mate, I, continue. I've, just, I've just written these down from the internet. No, no doubt the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It never lies. So I'm just, I'm just taking sure. this verbatim. Um, here's another okay. fact I didn't know, and I, I doubt you guys knew as well. But, um, you know, Air Force One, mate. Air Force One is actually powered by... <laughs> Four 1HD FT engines. They they actually tried to put six into it, but the thing kept Too rocketing off yeah, into space. Yeah. So they, they turned it down to only four <laughs> engines in that in that aircraft. And this is look, this is not a fact, but well, it is a fact, but it's not uh, on the internet just yet. But uh, this is just from personal experience of having owned 80 mm. series. I once tried to do a skid earlier in the year um, with with um, old Sooty here. The tires didn't yes. quite spin. It couldn't quite do a skid. And so I didn't think yep. much of it. But what had actually happened is the world spinned and um, that's why we had a leap here. Fantastic stuff. Oh, my, oh so, my God. So obviously, obviously it goes without saying, mate, the 80 Series is one of the, the most amazing vehicles of all time, in my opinion. And um, look, the fact that they're there to, it, it, to look, back it up. The fact you, that they're to back it you, up. You're, you've, you've, you've really made me think about that. You, and for sure, I'm going to give this to you 100% yep. for sure. It does come in second place. Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. It does come in second place. What, what have you got, mate? What have you got? Well, before before I stun you with some science that can't be disputed, can we have a look at some comments that we got in um, through the week? Yep. There's, a, there's a couple here that people have sort of, well, they've had their say, just like you've had your say. Fun on Forbes. 
He's gone with the old HZJ75 Troopy. Yep. You can't go past a Troopy, can you? Quite can handle classic. 35s easy. Can fit a 1HD FTE, 1HZ, all those motors that you know about. You don't need to pack up the bed. It's all in the back. I like so Troopies for that, for that reason. Mate. I like Troopies for that reason. Yep. They are cool. Jonah, he's gone with yep. something that I'm going to talk about in a minute. He's gone with a coil rear TD42 Patrol U. Yeah, not a bad vehicle. Bloke's got some taste, mate. He really yeah. has. But I, uh, I I was very impressed with what you had to say about that 80 series. I, I yeah. think you've, made a, you've, you've raised a lot of good points there, mate. You really have. Would you like to know my opinion? I would, mate. I would. I would. <clears throat> I'm guessing Are you it. comfortable there, mate? You look I, comfortable. I am, mate. Should I get another beer or? Well, it's not going to take long, but what I'd like to do if I could, mate, is just yep. take your mind back and make you think about perhaps the greatest the greatest challenge that man and machine will face together, a challenge that only the strongest in Australia or and perhaps the world will come out on top of. Dakar, I'm talking about the extreme... No, I'm no, talking about no. extreme four-wheel drive competitions now we're talking some of the biggest names in the you know in the competition scene we're talking yep. you know the australian off-road racing circuit the triple s winch we're yep. talking the winch challenges uh outback the outback challenge all that kind of stuff now mate i've done my research and i've gone back i only went back 15 years because i didn't want to bore you i've only gone back mm. 15 odd years in every one of those <laughs> every single division including class seven and eight of the australian off-road racing championship are dominated by patrols Nothing mm. else even comes close. Doesn't even stand up to it. So if you want to put your vehicle through the most testing conditions in Australia under race conditions, there is no way you choose anything except the strength, reliability, and endurance of a patrol. I'm just going to go a little bit further if I could, mate. Are you right there? You're comfy? <laughs> That's right. No, it's, I'd it's, like it's, to talk about... It's a bit, a bit of an eye-opener for me, to be honest with you, but go, keep going. Sure. Well, it would be. It'd be shocking for you right now because you're thinking, heck, an 80 Series wouldn't even enter one of those comps. I know. I it's hard to take, mate. Just I'm just going to go forward just a little bit more, if I could. The TD42, one of the last great engines ever made. Yep. Uh, the problem with the TD40, well, let's 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 go. Let's look at its positives first. Yeah, there's the not many those. The so be, this will be quite well, quick. Not, but, but, but what there is works very well. They're very slow. Yep. They don't make a lot of power. Nope. They're very old school. There's no electrics. Even the there's new no ones, yep. Fancy, yep. There's no fancy vacuums to go wrong. They're basically just a tractor engine. They just plot along at about 2,200 RPM and they do their job. The problem with the TD42. They were the problems that you just mentioned, right? No, mate, they are actually all positives. I'd like to talk about a negative of the TD42, if I could, please, mate. Oh, this is going to take a while, one isn't of the, it? Yeah. One, of the big, one of the big problems of a TD42 is that it can be made to go extremely fast very easily. Yep. A lot of people do that, but they don't quite do it right. And so the problems that we often see is overheating and high EGTs. However, if you get it right, You've now got yourself a vehicle that is strong enough to take on the toughest competitions in Australia and win them back to back for the last 15 years in every single class across the board. Yep. You've also got coils all around. You've got an extremely reliable yet powerful diesel engine. You've also, and I'm what this is something you didn't touch on with the 80 series, you've also got a vehicle that just looks tough. <laughs> like so said, this is the reasons why. Nine out of decided, ten women can't be wrong, mate. Facts are there. <laughs> well, there's just that one bloke I worry about with you, mate. It's, it might be nine out of ten women. But that is why, mate, I have gone for and I had to pick a model. It had to be GQ or GU. Getting a bit older, I like me comfort. I have gone with a TD42, last of GU Patrol, as the ultimate four-wheel drive ever made. Can't be disputed because it wins all the competitions. Simple as that. Well, there you go, mate. There you go. There you go. Look, there's a bit of, <laughs> bit of, bit of food for thought anyway. I mean, look, I, I will give it to you, Graham. For a forklift, yes. that TD42 is just yes. an absolute beast of a motor. Um, in a four-wheel drive, it well, is. might win competitions, but it won't get you and your family to Cape York. No, it, it will do, it'll do all that. <laughs> it, 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 it will do all that, and they, they are fantastic rigs. It's, that's that's what we're so lucky about, to be honest with you. We have yeah, so many mate, good four-wheel drives out there. Yep. There's, um, there's, we do. There's, there's a, like, that's just two of many really, really decent four-wheel drives. We heard from the guys on YouTube and um, on, yep. on social media about how many good four-wheel drives are out there, from Sierras through to um, 79 Utes to all sorts of things out there. But um, at the end yeah. of the day, it's probably the vehicle that you currently own, if it gets you out that's in the bush, exactly right. it's yep. the one. It's the one. It's the best four-wheel drive ever made for you. Couldn't agree more, mate. Couldn't agree more. You probably should save so up and try and buy yourself a Lanny Series Cruiser. But anyway, look, look. <laughs> Up to you guys anyway. <laughs> Mate, I think you're spot on there. I mean, have a look at what I've basically done in what's pretty stock. I mean, it's not stock, but the D-Max, we've taken that bad boy all around Australia. We've done some of the toughest tracks in Australia in that. So I think it really does just come down to what you want to use your vehicle for. And now that we've got that mid-alloy canopy on the D-Max, not yeah. only am I going everywhere in Australia, I'm doing it in comfort too, mate. Exactly right. And that, it really goes to show, yeah, the best four-wheel drive ever made 
is a very subjective question and it's going to you it know is. roll people up but whatever you do make sure you have your say in the comments below because we're keen to see what you think the best four-wheel drive ever made is stick around folks because coming up we'll take you through our favorite viewers rigs and answer the most popular questions of the week well, Graham, this sort of moves on to the next topic, mate, and um, it's very similar to the um, the choice of your best four-wheel drive ever, actually. Four-wheel drive fails. <laughs> so here we are. We're going to look at the best four-wheel drive fails that have been sent in um, over the last week. Before we get into that, though, we've got a um, prize to give away as well. For the best four-wheel drive fail, we're giving away a $100 Snatch gift voucher. So that way you can just jump onto the website and choose whatever you like up to the value, of course, of $100. So, um, yeah, one lucky winner. Let's um, let's get into the start, though. Mate, have a look at this bloke here. You've got to feel for him. Ray, is, he looks like he looks like he's given up. <laughs> he's got a little caption here that says, when 33s are too small, the bloody winch stops working. Look at him. <laughs> just uh, sitting. What else can we do? We'll all be there just sitting on the bank. Just, just sitting uh, there. <laughs> and then he's got his mate over here. I don't know if he's his mate, but Rob is Rob is deep in the mud. And... Uh, Mate, we've all been there, and you got to feel for them, the poor buggers. That's just, well, you got to pay to play Absolutely. sometimes, don't you? Exactly right, mate. Exactly right. And um, look at this one here, mate, from uh, 79 Series Boss. Damn. It took me a little while to work out what type of vehicle it was, because I'm not used to looking at the underside of my 79. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's on its lid. That's, mate, I... I, I do you reckon that's looks, the high country? I reckon that's the high country. I'm, I think it is, mate. Mm. It looks, look, the photos will never do it justice, but no I bet way. it was a big, steep, how you going. You'll like this one, mate. This is a uh, oh. this is a TDI Golf. You know what they are, don't you, mate? Yep. Pulling out I a do, 60 I series. Do, well, we don't know for sure it's pulled out the 60 series. Have Says we, it right here, mate. This? No, my mate's uh. 60 series got stuck. Uh, had to be yanked out with my TDI Golf. So there you go, mate. Well, there's a little tip that if you want your 60 series to perform a little bit better, just um, chop it just behind the driver's seat <laughs> and 20% um, better off road. Fact. <laughs> All right, Fact. That's, well, that's embarrassing, mate. That's embarrassing. Oh, Look at this goodness. one here, mate. We should we should check this video out because um, <laughs> this, is, this is when everything goes wrong. Oh, dude. Where'd he go? <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> Well, Chucko the Garbo, mate, something tells me you're still trying to get the mud out of those seats because that is some of the deeper water I've seen inside a four-wheel drive. That oh is insane, God. mate. Now we need, I suppose, a winner, Graham. What do you reckon? Mate, we've chosen this winner this week because this is really when things just spiral out of control. I mean, it's one thing to, to drown your four-wheel drive, but let me just read this out. This is Jess, and what's happened here is they've, they've broken the drive shaft. It snapped us falling on the ground. The rear yep. diff has almost lost half of its teeth. He's kept on driving by taking the rear shaft off, which makes a lot of sense, but he's forgotten to lock the transfer case, and he's also broken his transfer case in pieces. He says, live and learn, they say. Well, mate. Live and learn, that's a, no that's a nice thing to say in those circumstances, yeah, I, I, I suppose. Reckon he said things, I reckon he said things with um, much shorter syllables and really <laughs> loudly at the time, but, but mate, oh, I think this guy's name is Jess. I think it's Jess. We are going to get you out a hundred buck snatch gift voucher. Grab yourself a t-shirt and use it to dry your eyes every now and again. Yeah. <laughs> well, I reckon that is a deserved winner of our $100 gift voucher to snatchclothing.com.au. So whatever you do, if it's going to um, help the situation, that was a very <laughs> bad day off on the tracks. Going to Snatch Clothing and kicking yourself out with some of the finest threads, I reckon will um, will make your day anyway. So whatever you do, make sure you keep sending your fails in yep. because um, there's going to be a regular section and uh, we love to hear from you guys. If we were to go through our fails, I reckon oh, we've got 10 years of archive footage. We've got so mate. many fails we've done ourselves. Yep. It's good to see you guys stuff up just like we do. And um, that probably brings us to the next part of the show, mate. Tip of the week. That's Ooh. something we can all probably listen to. And I'm about to take notes of this one because tip of the week can't go astray. We've got an absolute cracker to kick things off, if you don't mind. Stuart's put one in. I've never thought of this before, but it is. It's something that I've run into before. Let's say you do have to go into the big smoke and park in an underground car park. How's this for a tip? All you got to do is put a little yep. strip of insulation tape on your front aerial that's exactly the same height as the highest point of your vehicle. So as you're driving along, you come to the underground car park. If that little strip fits under the underground car park, your four-wheel drive's going to fit under there. So simple. I'm, I'm going to yeah, do that. I'm going to do that this afternoon. How good would that be in the high country when it when a tree's over the track, yep, though? Yep. And you go, oh, I, th I think my rooftop tent's going to clear. Yep. And um, you can just see in two seconds. That is a great little it's a tip. It's a really good um, idea. 
What about this one here from Chris J? Um, grabbing um, a shovel worth of coals and putting it under your camp chair on those really cold nights. Yep. Um, we've done that one before, mate. That yep. is a great little tip as well. Just to remember, don't put too many coals. It can actually burn the bottom of your camp chair and um, <laughs> get your rod on the old... Uh, yeah, you've got to be careful. You do. You, you do have to be, be careful. careful. Now, the third tip of the week comes from Ben. Now, Ben's got a little video here. He's going to show us exactly what his tip is. Now, guys, and go to the guys at four-wheel drive action. I've been watching your YouTube content, fellas, and I'm, this is my little tip for one of those simple things you can do to your car to make life a little easier in the bush. A big piece of low-density foam on the inside of the box door. Just means stuck there with double-sided tape. Don't be afraid to give the surface a good clean before you start sticking stuff to it. So in there, I can put my double jack, my favourite peg bag, butane soldering iron, very handy, little camp stove, and... Now it's all been pushed into place at all times with the foam to stop things from bouncing around on the tracks. And on the other side of my ute, where I've, you can see I've carved out the foam to accommodate these batteries to stop them wiggling out as I'm driving around. And the ever faithful Red Arc inverter, making sure all the vents too are uh, well and truly ventilated. Well, there you go, Ben. Absolutely cracking idea, mate. Sean, what do you reckon? Absolutely, mate. I hate when things rattle around. Yep. What you need to do is fit a bigger exhaust pipe so the <laughs> noise of the vehicle cancels out all those sounds and you never need to worry about it. <laughs> well, that brings us on to our tip of the week. And this week we're looking at um, the best mods you can do to your four-wheel drive for under 100 bucks. And the way we figure it is we're all stuck in isolation at the moment, stuck yep. in the shed, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Money is a little bit tight yes. and um, very tight in some cases. So we're looking for things to do to keep us occupied that isn't going to break the bank. Yep. Um, Graeme, you've got a cracking little idea, mate, don't you? Yeah, mate. Look, in some of the uh, lower spec models of uh, Patrol, where the uh, airbag would have been, they kept that vacant space there but didn't put the airbag inside it. So some people have turned that into an extra glove box. But what I've done, I jumped online and I bought myself a DC distribution panel. It's got uh, SIG sockets. It's got USB sockets. It's all pre-wired. And I just put all the wiring in behind that little panel, screwed it in, and now I've got a whole heap of 12 volt that I can plug in whilst I'm inside the vehicle. Actually worked out really well. And I got that online, delivered to my door for under 100 bucks, mate. And it took me a couple of hours to install it. So it's a really good little thing you can do. A couple of days, probably. Didn't take me a couple of days. <laughs> took me a couple, maybe a day and a couple of days. Well, I mate, swore a lot. I hope you got fire insurance in that patrol of yours, that's for sure. <laughs> I do. I do. And a fire extinguisher. <laughs> Look, that brings me on to my, um, my, my little tip. For a DIY mod that you can do in your shed, um, camp lights. Now, mm. camp lighting is... I reckon absolutely essential. It can yep. completely transform your rig. And if you've ever seen the camp lights in the back of Sooty, I've got a couple of little Terraloom lights in there. Now, I've got a couple here to show you. Now, check these out. These you can pick up for an absolute steal. Now, check those little bad boys out, if you can see those. These are the same ones that are running Sooty, and um, these are $29 each. So, you know, get two of them. Put them up on the tailgate like I did on the 80 series, and um, they give so much yeah, light out at camp, light. and I think they... Like, by the time you get a switch, by the time you get a little bit of wire, um, oh, it's going to owe you about 75 bucks to get wicked camp lights on your four-wheel drive. You'll thank yourself, mate. You really will. That's uh, The tips combined there, our tips and the reader's tips, I've got a fair bit of work to do over the next few days, mate, and it's going to start this I afternoon know, I, with I'm, a little bit of tape. I definitely like that one about putting a little bit of lecky tape oh, around the area because that costs absolutely oops, nothing. That's genius. That can save you a lot of money Absolute too. Absolute genius, yeah. mate. Now, speaking of all things fantastic and awesome, I'd like to take a look at our next segment, which is, and I think this is going to be a really popular one, mate. We have got Rig of the Week. Well, now it's one of my favourite segments of Beers in the Shed, and um, it's show us your rigs. And I uh, love seeing you guys' rigs, and there's been some absolute crackers come through this week, and um, hopefully you can have a look at some of these and maybe get a bit of inspiration for your own build. Yes. And um, whatever yes. you do, just keep sending us in photos of your rig because you could even win a prize. Now we'll kick off first with um, Shelly and her U Butte Pajero. Look at That's that a cracker. Thing. I think it's an NL. Yep. It's an NL and it's got it's just got a stack of little modifications on it. They haven't gone over the top, and I bet that thing goes just about everywhere. And judging from the photos, she does go everywhere. She's not scared of driving it. Now, Shelly's nicknamed her three-liter five-speed manual Pajero Magpie. And she reckons in the eight years she's owned it, it's done every track there is in Tasmania. To help it along, it's had a throttle body upgrade giving it more low down power. Plus she's got air lockers and a winch. Internally, she's running Stratos seats. She's got a dual battery system and a 200 watt solar panel on the roof. Plus of course, LED internal lighting. On top of that, 
There's a 12 volt travel buddy, a drawer system, and fridge slide. What an absolute weapon. Mate, have a look at the next one here. This is four year old Ronan, and he has had a tough day out of the Wadigans. He broke a tail shaft, he's managed to limp it back home. And he's got it up on axle it stands happens. there. Yeah, when, you, when you're playing hard, you've got to pay sometimes. <laughs> and he's underneath there doing a bit of mechanical work. And, uh, mate, I yep. tell you what, he takes pride in that rig of his, as you can see. It's actually, oh, he does. It's actually cleaner than a lot of your trucks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it is, mate. It could definitely two, two out of three aren't that clean. And I just like the fact that he's he's so busy and content under there. He doesn't even come out to smile for the photo. No, he's mate. just like, no. Dad, look, just hurry up and take the photo, mate. There's a tail shaft that needs fixing. So. Got to get back out in the tracks, <laughs> mate. Good on him. And look, the third one I want to show you is the winner of this segment. So they'll be taking home a prize, and that is a set of uh, camp lights from Terra Loom. They're the same ones that I showed you that are running the back of the 80 series here. They'll light your whole camp up. And um, not that you probably need it, because look at this look at this vehicle here, mm. mate. It's a 60 series Land Cruiser. That is nice. And it's in absolutely mint condition. Now the story behind this one, it's been in the family for 30 years. Um, it's done only 330,000 Ks in original 2H motor. <laughs> so look, it's not even run in that vehicle. And um, they've got a lot of cool little mods on it. It just looks like an absolute turnkey go anywhere machine. This HJ60 belongs to Scott and Anna, who are based in God's country, Western Australia and they've been building their Ultimate Wagon Tourer for four years after buying it off their grandparents. They've upgraded to a two and a half inch exhaust. They've added 33 inch muddies plus a two inch lift, including airbag assist carries in the rear. There's also a long range 200 litre tank and a custom designed twin rear wheel carrier. One of Scott and Anna's favorite additions has been the clamshell rooftop tent. Plus they've added a front bar, spotties and winch, as well as rear drawers and a dual zone fridge. So you guys have won yourself a set of Terra Loom camping lights. They're gonna look great on that 60 series of yours and no doubt you'll put them to great use. Well, across YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, we get a stack of questions all the time, and we always read these questions as a stack come through, and um, we're gonna answer a few of these right now. So whatever you do, keep sending your questions in because there's a stack of questions we don't even think about sometimes um, but we love to answer, and um, you guys like hearing some of those answers too. So we'll start off with the first one from Josh Mills. The best tips for anyone getting into four-wheel driving. Now, for, for me, the best tip is to just get out there and do it. Now, that seems pretty obvious when you come to think about it, but get out there and just enjoy your four-wheel drive for what it is. Now, if it doesn't have 35s and twin lockers, don't be under the impression that you need all those modifications to go and drive tracks. Just get out there on the beach, get out there on a few fire trails, and just enjoy your vehicle. And, um, and then work up to what you want to use that vehicle for and modify it accordingly. So for me, it's just, I guess, walk before you run is the big tip there for, for getting into the four-wheel drive scene. Couldn't agree more, mate. And I reckon beach runs, like you just mentioned there, are one of the perfect spots to start off, mate. Yeah. We've got a question here from Max. Uh, and Max wants to know, he wants to do some solo camping, but he doesn't know mm -hmm. what he should do to prepare. Look, I absolutely love my solo camping. And once you get used to being in the bush on your own and doing your solo trips, you never have to worry about waiting for mates again. You just go and do it. And if they're available, they come along. If they're not, they don't. But one of the things that a lot of people are very apprehensive about is being out there alone at night. So two tips yep. I can give. For your very first trip, don't go going right out into the back end of the Blangalow Forest because you're going to freak yourself out. <laughs> Keep it somewhere fairly close and local to your home. So you might have a national park that's only just down the road that you can camp in. Head down there so you kind of know you're in your home territory. And the second one that makes everyone feel much, much better at night Make sure you've got some comms. So if you're sitting in your uh, in your swag at night and you've got your phone and you're chatting to the missus or you you know you're watching a bit of Netflix or whatever, it always makes you feel like you're much closer to home. Gradually, yeah, you can I... go further afield and get away from it a bit more. But those little tips will get you out there, mate. When I when I camp solo, which is not that often to be honest with you, um, I play some good music by myself yes. and yes. Um, have a couple of cold ones, and I, I find was that say. just. Um, <laughs> That just makes the night very enjoyable and obviously get a fire going. It's like someone to talk to when the fire is going. That's exactly and just, right. That's exa or just, just sit, sit there and talk to yourself, mate. No one will ever bother a bloke <laughs> that's just sitting talking to himself, mate. They'll just they'll just walk straight off. <laughs> right, I sure don't move it along, mate. We've got uh, old Squirry Hub here. He wants to know about adding a snorkel to his D-Max. A really good idea. He wants to know he's got mixed info on going stainless versus plastic. Look, at the mm. end of the day, what you're looking at there is airflow. And that's what you're probably trying to get your head around. The number one thing you've got to make sure you do when you add a snorkel to any vehicle, be it, be it stainless or plastic, is that it actually clamps down to your air box in a manner that makes it watertight. Doesn't matter yeah. what sort of snorkel you've got, so long as it's watertight where it attaches to your air box. That's the number one thing. Staino doesn't bounce back if you hit a tree or the bank. It'll dent it and it dents forever. Plastic, when you put it in the sun, will bounce back again. 
Some of the Stano ones are actually quite thick uh, when it comes to S, quite wide when it comes to airflow. So you might get a bit more airflow down through them. It really is horses for courses. Uh, the pricing, mm. of course, you're going to pay a little bit more for a Stano one. You might not like the look of the Stano one, but look at the end of the day, it stops water getting into your engine. That's, that's and it the main can keep, thing. That's the main thing, and it can keep clear, cleaner air getting into the engine too in dusty conditions. But One, one thing I've found with Toyotas, the air boxes on the driver's side, and with a stainless uh, snorkel, there's a lot of induction yep. noise. Yes, that's one thing. If you let your window down, it's, it's, um, it's, an, it's almost a nightmare to drive. Yeah, um, okay. Yep. Some people like the sound of it. I'm one of them. I think they sound pretty cool. But yep. if you're doing a lot of long distance driving, you Can can't put the window down because the noise is it's just too much. Yeah, so, I hear um, you. Something to consider. Something to yep, consider. But either way, make sure that sucker is really attached at the airbox end. Mate, here's a qu I reckon this question, you should go with this one because <laughs> I reckon you'll have an answer <laughs> for it. Oh, the best rookie mistakes we've ever done. Far out. There's been, there's been so many rookie mistakes. Like on every single trip, you'd think after a career that spanned at least 10 to 15 years in the four-wheel drive industry, um, yep. you wouldn't make so many of those mistakes. But we do all the time. And the time. I'm not too proud to say a few of them right now, at least one of them. Here's one. Here's one. Um, when I was driving in a bog hole once, I, I, my knee hit the transfer case, put it into neutral, and I thought I was bogged straight away because I was just revving, nothing was happening, got recovered, all that stuff, then went to drive off, still in neutral, and then I realised <laughs> I had red face, all the boys were laughing. That's <laughs> I'm gold, also mate. an honest forward driver. I'd tell everyone on the radio, oh, look what I just did. That's <laughs> gold, mate. Like, I actually did something very similar. Do you know the old trick where you unlock your mate's hubs? He thinks he's still yeah, in forward yep. drive, he's not. Mate, have you ever done it to yourself? <laughs> I've got a beach very close to me here and I uh, I came up one day, I got home and I decided to unlock my hubs. What I'd actually done, I'd forgotten I'd unlocked them when I got off the beach uh, and I locked them when I got uh, home. Bugger. So when I bugger. next went down to the beach, I unlocked my hubs, went straight down to the beach and uh, yeah, sank down to me diffs, couldn't realise why. I'd uh, just played the, I'd oh. played the prank on myself, mate. I've got one more funny story. It actually happened on the Balfour track. Um, as you know, the Balfour <laughs> track's got lots of deep water yep. and um, the camera car usually goes first. Anyway, it went in first it got really stuck in some deep water water starts coming through the doors in fact coming through the windows it's up to the seats it's really deep so i've um jumped in there with a snatch strap i said to the boys look i don't want to hang around long because i don't want to get water inside my vehicle let's just make this one of the most the quickest recoveries you can ever think of so i jumped in there we put the recovery strap on i said right out three two one let's go for it bang came, came to an abrupt stop now that 80 series camera car was going nowhere it had another go bang would not move and i'm like far out it must be must be so stuck anyway i got stuck as well so now we've got a taut snatch strap two vehicles are stuck in a big water hole we've got water just flooding in everywhere turns out that dorian if you're if you're watching mate um, our camera will be gone i won't mention his name i won't mention his name it'll be embarrassing he had his foot on the brake the whole time and it's just because he had water up to his knees like i don't know just in the in the heat of the moment I, I he just think put his he foot on the brake had, the whole I time so i'm trying to recover clutch. him i know he thought he had his foot in the clutch yeah, and i'm just yeah try into it and I just could not budge that vehicle and um, yeah we both got wet seats so <laughs> it's, it's the one time a Toyota brake has actually worked for goodness sake <laughs> here's another question um, for Borgie question the most common spare parts that you recommend when taking on extended off-road trips and I suppose the best way to answer that is to get to know your vehicle um, yeah. every single vehicle is different and what I'd recommend for one truck would be different so if I was recommending something for a Nissan Patrol for instance it'd be a list longer than my arm but for say something like my 80 series I take two CVs, two axles, which are connected to the CVs. I'll take a locking hub. I'll take um, basically all the things I know I could break. I even take an alternator sometimes, especially if I like go to Tasmania or a place where there's a lot of mud, maybe Cape York or a lot of water crossings and things like that. I might pack an alternator, just all little bits and pieces, enough tools to basically do the job yourself as well. And that is a pretty good starter kit for anyone wanting to do remote area travel. Couldn't agree more, mate. One other little thing that a lot of people don't think to take is a manual. If you've got a manual for your four-wheel drive, you might break something you've got no idea about, but if you can sit down yep. by the side of the track with your manual, you might just figure it out. And you can pick those up as a PDF form, put them on your phone yep. or maybe on your iPad or something like that, and you've always got your driver's manual, your vehicle's manual, sorry, with you when you do go somewhere. So if you do break something, you can always figure it out, mate. Now, look, we've got one more here, and it comes from, uh, funnily enough, G Moore. Now, very timely, because G Moore is asking, uh, he's thanking us for the vids, he thinks they're awesome. Uh, about to get a new tray for his uh, a new tray for his Ute. Do I go with a half canopy or a full canopy? It's a question we get asked all the time. And luckily enough, our special guest of the week this week is none other than a very good mate of ours, Tim from Mitz Alloy. And I actually asked him this question on your behalf, G Moore. So let's get in touch with Tim and see what he's got to say. Timbo, got you there? I've got you, Graham. How are you over there, mate? Oh, we're killing it. It's great. 
Excellent, mate. And you guys have still got the factory door open. You're still going hell for leather over there. You're still spitting yep. out canopies. As I promised earlier, like we, we haven't let anyone go. We're still going hell for leather. There's there's no stopping us at the moment. So uh, oh, things mate, have that's... definitely changed. We've got we've we've got to think a bit more outside the box in deliveries. But other than that, we're we're still firing along. Think outside the box. I like what you said there, mate. Now, as you know, <laughs> we put a uh, we put a post up just recently, and I'm fa I'm stoked that you can uh, that you can spend a bit of time. I know what that factory's like to answer what has turned out to be a massive number of questions from people. So, do you reckon we could get stuck in, mate? And I can throw a couple of questions at you. Yeah, far away. Let's get stuck into them. One of the biggest ones we got was asked by a lot of people, but Bromley wants to know um, what is the most requested canopy design you guys do. Oof. Okay. It's a toss-up between your canopy and our 79 series Land Cruiser. Absolutely. <laughs> Righto, mate. We've got... Uh, this is another very frequently asked question. This one comes from Thomas Graham. You can tell he's a good bloke. Thomas wants to know, why alloy over steel, mate? A uh, lot. Lighter weight. Yeah. The steel trays you have to paint, uh, they rust. Uh, they're heavier. Mm. Yep. Alloy, yes, it's lighter. It is slightly more fragile, but if you construct it in the right way, it's gonna it's gonna hold together forever. How about how about a steel tray with an alloy canopy? Um, you, you're gonna be carrying the extra weight of the steel tray, but there's no problems with the alloy canopy going on top of a steel tray. The the, the base that you put your canopy on, uh, if it's not strong and rigid, a steel tray doesn't have a lot of flex through it. Where if you go and use a conventional clip lock style aluminium tray. You can drive along behind those and just watch them walk all over and that just puts added stress through the whole canopy. Uh, you'll find that it'll start to crack at the seams if it's, uh, if it's not a properly built out one. Uh, the way we construct our aluminium mm. trays is much like a steel tray, so it's got that strength through it. It stops all the flexing through the, through the body of the canopy. The other thing is we always recommend pairing our trays with our canopies. That way uh, you can be sure it's going to last forever. And, um, and it's going to suit the tray itself. No one makes a tray the same size, same width. Believe me, I wish they did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> uh, we've got another question here from Zane Taylor. Now, Zane wants to know, what is the one thing that you should ask for or know before buying a canopy? What's that one thing you should take into account before buying a canopy? Oh, good question. I definitely, uh, the vehicle, first of all, because you want to know what size you want to build and then what you're going to do with it. Are you going to set it up for touring, hard tracks? Are you going to set it up for work? Because you might want more space, less space, all the bits and pieces. So, and then that taken into account, weight. Definitely want to know how much it's all going to weigh so you're not going to exceed the GVM of your vehicle. Mate, speaking of weight, DJB wants to know, what does the average canopy weigh? Uh, around 100 kilos, empty weight, and then you're looking at about 135 kilos for a tray base as well. So, yeah, just depending on how big it is, of course, the more material, the more the weight goes into it, but we use uh, the minimum grade material that we need or the minimum amount of material we need to keep it as strong as possible. So when you're looking at something like the D-Max, by the time you take that entire tub off, plus the canopy off the back of it, you're really not adding that much weight to it at all. No, without a fridge slide and tyres, you're looking at around 350 kg, including the box and everything. But even the setup that's on yours is shorter again, so you'd probably be yep. a few uh, 20, 30 kilos off that. Okay, well, speaking of length of canopy, that's a question we get asked all the time, and I've got one here. Life of a Sound Guy wants to know what are the pros and cons of a full-length canopy versus little stubby one on the back. So a shorter one, you're going to have less storage space, but you're going to have more tray beds. So on my original setup on the Hilux, I could put a dirt bike going across the canopy, and that was because I had a one meter box. But if you go to a longer box, you've got more storage for, for more things. Just depends on how much you want to carry. If you want to carry firewood, you're probably better off having a shorter canopy. If you don't like your dog and you want to leave it outside and you want to put it on the back of the tray, then that's also a good option for a short one. Uh, longer ones just give you the storage, it allows you to have more drawers, allows you to be more organised too. Keep your bits and pieces dry. Okay mate, Lockie Grant wants to know, what's the secret behind good seals on a canopy? He must have seen the old thousand dollar track video we did because by <laughs> crikey, we dunked that D-Max and we, on it mate, we didn't, people might be saying, oh you did that for the camera. No, we didn't. That yeah, thing yeah, yeah. did not even take in a drop of water. Not yeah. even a drop of water. What's the secret behind good seals, mate? Uh, big, plush, automotive seals. If you go for a little thin seal, then you're, you're only going to get as much pressure on the door. If you have more rubber, more, more pressure on that seal, and you actually set it right when you design the canopy, and you get all your fold pattern right, the door's going to press evenly over that seal and, get, and, and, and seal it up better. That's what you want. 
and double locks. It's got to catch and press in two corners. If it doesn't, then ah. you, if you just press it in the center, the outsides of the doors are going to flex out. And if you only press it with the, the catches that push across, that, that doesn't give you the, the, the pressure you need against it. If you look at the car door and you have a look at that seal too, it's even all the way around and they're thick and plush. You look at a lot of canopies and their little thin seal just doesn't cut it. Well, you're absolutely nailing it, mate, because I've never seen a trundle tray go underwater and not get water in it. Every <laughs> trundle tray I've ever owned, or my mate's got trundle trays, they always get water in it. And we would have had that D-Max underwater for five, ten minutes, not even a drop in the trundle tray. Something to be said for it, mate. I'm very glad to hear that. You've put it further than I have, that's for sure. <laughs> mate, another question we've got a lot when we put this yep. post up was, what size canopy, and this is from Kurt JD, get on your Kurt, what size Kurt. canopy would you recommend for a dual, yeah, old Kurtie, for a dual cab ute, so let's let's go with the D-Max, a dual cab ute, yep. mainly for touring. He's not gonna be doing any hard tracks, he just wants to go and see Australia. I would recommend a 1600 long canopy on an 1800 bed. That way, if you're gonna put spare tires, cause you're touring, you're gonna be remote, so you're gonna want more than one yep. spare that's under it. You can put a spare on the back, but you're not gonna have all that weight behind your axles, so that's definitely a big no-no, you want drivability. And then uh, the 1800 uh, tray package with the under tray boxes, you get longer boxes under there, you get more storage space. Uh, and the, and the, six, the 16's just the perfect size. That's what's on our Hilux here that you've seen on the episodes we take away. And, and that place, that goes everywhere. You've put that through its paces for sure. Jacko has anyway. Yeah, mate. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Righto, mate, got a curly one for you. It comes in from Bubba. He wants to know if he's gonna go out and buy a brand new dual cab ute off the showroom floor, and he wants to fit a custom canopy, obviously at Mitz Alloy, how does he go about avoiding throwing out that back end that is gonna come with the vehicle? It's a good question. So let's talk in Hiluxes, because Hiluxes, there's a pretty clear range there. The SR5 Hilux, you're always gonna get a tub on the back, but if you want all the fruity yep. sensors and cameras and things like that, that's what you might need to go to. The SR models, they can be specced without a tub or a tray, they just come as a, as, as a, as a as a cab chassis. So the cab chassis comes clean and clear. If you order it direct from the dealer, you can roll it into their finance. So they'll finance it through whichever uh, finance options they've got available. And they can also, if it's a brand new car being shipped into the country from the factory, they can route it through the bodybuilder that you want. So we have router numbers with all the major car brands. So if uh, say someone buys a Toyota and you live in Perth, you can get it routed through Newcastle. We can fit the canopy and tray to it and then the dealer will pick it up from here and deliver it straight to you in Perth. Oh, I did not know that. So that saves on shipping, it saves on hassle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but gonna, as long as it's money. not on the lot, you've <laughs> got to make sure that they're delivering it through the yard and we're good to go. Yeah, so yeah. the routing numbers, ah. and all the car firms do that because they ship so many cars. Yeah, it's good. Well, I'll be, that's a, that's a, re that's a really good tip, mate. Thank you so much for answering these questions. I know that factory is uh, liggity split daily in there. Can yep. you say good day to everyone in the factory for us? <laughs> will do. Two thumbs up to all the guys in there and the girls in there. And Very mate, good. I will see you as soon as I possibly can but back over the East Coast, eh? I oh, know, that'd be great, mate. Look forward to it. All right, mate, yeah. take care and we'll be in touch. <laughs> all right, cheers, bud. See ya. Awesome to hear from Tim there. You know, he put some points forward there that I'd never even thought of when it comes to putting something as simple, what I thought was as yeah. simple, as putting a canopy on the back of your four-wheel drive. So thank you very much, Timbo. Can't wait to get across and have a beer with you. Speaking of um, good quality, mate, it probably brings us Big to up, our mate. deal of the week. So, mate, last week's deal of the week just absolutely went bananas. Um, I think it was some kind, of, some kind of record, mate. We sold out within probably about two days. So um, to yep. try and to try and keep the deals right up there. Well, I thought about offering a deal that is very cheap, very affordable, and um, yep. a good way to personalize your vehicle and show that you're part of the Snatch crew at um, a very, very small cost. So we've got a sticker pack, which is our deal of the week this week. It's a cracking sticker pack. You get yourself um, a magnetic stubby holder, which is a good thing. Chuck it's it on your weird. vehicle, you'll, you'll never lose it. You'll never lose it. You, nearly live in that thing, mate, and you probably mm. would if you could. Mm. And um, you'll get yourself a windscreen sticker, a couple of the yep. big stickers, a few bumper stickers, the whole yep. sticker pack. You'd normally have to spend over 50, it'd be cost you over 50 bucks for that one, but uh, $39, which is an absolute bargain. So um, just while stocks last, that is on the Snatch website, snatchclothing.com.au. And yep. um, jump on that one before it all runs out. Absolutely, mate. That's an absolute cracking deal of the week, folks. Take advantage of that, because that will run out if the last one is anything to go by. And heck, who doesn't like a big old Snatch windscreen sticker across the front of their four-wheel drive? Let's people know exactly what you're into. Mate, I reckon that 
I'm just about done. I've got to get another beer in a minute. Brings us yep. to a bit of a close. That's uh, that's beers in the shed for a week, mate. That's it's been fantastic, and I've absolutely enjoyed this one. I love I'm hearing from you guys. Whatever yep. you guys do, just keep commenting, keep asking please, questions because we go please. through them all. And um, yep. if you're lucky enough, we'll actually feature them on next week's um, Beers in the Shed. If you want to be involved, commenting is one thing, but if you want to send us photos or even videos, videos. that's, videos. Even, we love that's them. even better. Yeah. And um, yeah. something tells me the guys that put a little bit of effort in are probably more likely to win a prize, Ooh, I reckon. Sneaky behind reckon. the scenes, eh? You're getting a bit of favouritism reckon, there. I, <laughs> I reckon so. And that brings me to another question that I suppose we get asked nearly every single day on all social me media platforms. That is when the Dirty 30 episode is going to drop. And um, for you guys, you're very lucky because this week on Thursday, that's when we go for the next episode of the Dirty 30, and it's an absolute cracker, mate. We go do through people really detail. want to see that? You sure about they this? They do, mate. They do. Really? My inbox fills up, and um, <laughs> it's what it. Look, it's a build like no other, and I suppose it that's is, what actually. people get excited about. A lot of people in the four-drive industry these days get a 79 series, put a bull bar yeah. on it, a set of spotlights, and call <laughs> it the ultimate build ever. And um, I disagree. I reckon you, yeah. if you want to go full custom and check out this build, it's wild. This time we'll show you the interior, um, which we haven't really. Shed too much light on the interior just yet, and let me say the I've guys at Cruiser Consoles, oh mate, they've done it's, such a cracking yeah. job. Next level. It's just out of this world. So it's a little mix of uh, old school with fair bit of new school, and it's just one. You, you epic, know, you epic know what build. I can't wait to do, mate. I can't wait to go yep. on it, and I'm being honest here. I, I can't wait to go on a trip with you, and um, ah. I'll sit in the passenger seat. Uh, and yep. I'm, I'm going to eat spaghetti bolognese whilst I have an ice cream <laughs> and a thick shake. And I'd like us to go over some of the bumpiest yeah, yeah. roads we possibly can. It's just going to be no, going you're, everywhere. You're, you're not even going to drive in, in, in the bull dust of the Dirty 30, mate. I'll give you that no. little hot tip. No, no, I reckon, no, I reckon though, nice. honestly, mate, one thing, you know, isolation's got me thinking of yep. heaps of cool trips that I want to do. A trip with Shorty and the Dirty 30 at some stage. I don't know when. Mate, uh, I think that would. I don't know if the internet is big enough for such an event oh, to occur. It's got to happen. Would, it's it's got to happen. We're gonna bring the man back sick? together, mate. That wouldn't would be, it be sick. super cool. Yeah, that wouldn't be, it be super I, I, cool. You, you up for that, old girl? She just quivered, mate. She just quivered. <laughs> she's that excited. She, Goodness yeah, gracious. She's up for a few big nights. That'll, that sounds yep, like Shorty. I'll tell you what. All right. She'll be right, folks. Thank you so much for joining us. Like Sean, I said before, please keep that content rolling in because there's a very good chance that we will share it on the show. Keep in touch with us, just as we're keeping in touch with you during these difficult times. Stay safe out there, and if you're in your shed, crack yourself a beer, why not? Do a bit of work on your trucks, and until next week, mate, same time, we're going to do it at the same time next yeah, week. Yeah, same time next week, guys. Thank you for listening in from my shed to yours. Graham? Yes. Till next from time, buddy. To yours, mate. Alright, cheers, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Catch us next See week. See you later, mate.